The process of identifying the patient's correct operative site is something I take very seriously. I've come to this for several reasons. I was trained by Dr. Herndon, who made safety his principal goal when he was president of the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Orthopedic surgeons have had a leadership in this starting in the 1980s with the sign your site procedure, which has now become part of the standard JCO safety procedures. Additionally, I've become a pilot in the last five years, and aviation safety is something which I take very seriously. The idea of using checklists and making sure that you're certain that you're doing the right thing before a critical step is something that is something I believe in. Consequently, the process of doing the stop before doing an operation is something that comes naturally to me. It's something I want to do, first for the safety of the patient, and secondly because it obviously has medical legal complications if you do the wrong thing. A recent uh, case by Dr. David Ring that he published included an excellent orthopedic surgeon who thought he was going to be doing three carpal tunnel surgeons surgeries in a row and on the third operation did a carpal tunnel surgery but that patient had been consented for a trigger finger release so it happens even to the great surgeons in our community so consequently there are four steps along the way that I personally go through prior to an operation to ensure that I'm operating on the correct site first something that we all do which is sign the patient's site in a place that is visible with an indelible pen prior to going to the operating room now for your safety I want you to tell me again what part of your body am I going to be working on today on my left shoulder what will I be doing for your left shoulder You have a problem with your rotator cuff, and we're going to be yes. repairing your rotator cuff. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And who do you want me to talk to when we're uh, finished with your operation today? Mr. Is he going to be here, or do you want me to call him? Uh, he will be here to pick me up. Okay, but I'll call him. I'll call him when we finish the operation, because okay. you'll be in the recovery room for probably an hour, an hour and a half before he can pick you up. Okay. Okay. Nice. Very good. So the left shoulder is the correct shoulder. Yes. Very good. Okay, we're going to go into the operating room now. Mm -hmm. Second is when the patient comes into the room, I ask the patient to identify themselves, state their full name, and also to uh, say what part of their body they're having operated on, and if they can, what operation they're having done. And I make sure all the people in the room hear that. One of the other safety things we do is to make sure that the radiographic studies are in concordance with the plan. And uh, these are the uh, MRI, we verify the patient, uh, it's Ilsa Wargo. And uh, this was done on the 4th of October, uh, just under two months ago. And this is of her left shoulder here. The, uh, as we look here, this is her humeral head. The rotator cuff coming across the top. And as we come towards the front of the uh, shoulder, we can see this white stuff is the fluid, which is where the rotator cuff tendon should be, where the tendons actually form from the bone. In this area, so we're going to be repairing this tendon right here back to the bone over here. So the x-ray studies here are in accordance with what she said in the consent. We also have our plain x-rays up that also indicate the left shoulder is the correct shoulder over on the x-ray viewer over there. The third time is when I am about to leave the room to go scrub my hands. I have everyone in the room agree what site is going to be prepped. That's one of the ones, the times that the, uh, errors can happen. If someone preps the wrong site, the surgeon comes in and may drape the wrong site, and that can lead you down the wrong road. We've got the operative shoulder available. Now we're going to look at her head. The head position is a little bit high here. I'm going to bring this holder down just a little bit. What do you think of her neck position, Josh? Just tilt it back just slightly, but I think that's well within the normal range of motion. Does that look comfortable to you? Looks fine. Okay. So the head's in neutral position. We've got the face shield on and the antibiotics are already on, correct? Okay. So the patient is positioned for safety. The uh, left shoulder is the correct shoulder. We're going to be prepping the left shoulder. Do we all agree about prepping the left shoulder? Okay. Let's prep the left shoulder. Anything else I can do before I wash my hands? We all set? Okay. The fourth is the stop. The stop is done by the circulating nurse who reads from the consent form, verifies that the consent appropriately matches the site that the surgeon's about to operate on. And then I have, as a separate thing, 
each member of my team identify themselves to state what their name is and that they agree that they're going to, they agree what the operative site is going to be. This is Ilse Wargo. We confirmed her bracelet before she was draped. We're doing a left shoulder rotator cuff repair and decompression. Um, we agree it's the left side. The left side is marked. We have um, all of our equipment that's needed. We have our images on the DR. Um, she did get antibiotics yes, on did. time. Confirmed. And are there any um, safety precautions or anything that we should be concerned about for this procedure? None special or usual. We all agree? Okay, left shoulder is correct. Yes. I'm Lori Capaldo, a circulating nurse. I'm Joe Porter, circulating nurse also. Eric Olson, orthopedic surgeon. I agree the left shoulder is the correct shoulder. Dr. Richards, ortho PA. Left shoulder is correct. Rosemary Damoncello, surgical technologist. Left shoulder is correct shoulder. The reason for this is two. One, I want every member of the team to take responsibility for the fact that we're going to be operating on the correct side. Secondly, I want to give them agency. Agency means that they feel comfortable speaking up about any safety issue they see, any opportunity for safety improvement that is available to them, such as an inadvertent contamination of the gloves, such as someone banging into an operative table, back table, and contaminating it. Anytime there's a safety thing, I want every member of my team to be able to speak up so that we can enhance patient safety. And then once we've all agreed we've got the correct site, the correct operation, then we start the surgery.